Hello my beautiful girls, I am so excited that you are here today. We have a very special video and we are going to get right into it. We're talking about how to heal wounded feminine energy. This video has been so highly requested, I should have made this a long time ago, but I'm really excited to bring it to you now. So let's go ahead and get started. We are going to talk about what wounded feminine energy is, where it comes from, and how to heal it. I have a few steps to give you so that you can actually leave this video healing any wounded feminine energy that you have. Everyone that's watching live, welcome. I'm so happy that you're here. All of your questions, I will take those at the end. So beginning with what wounded feminine energy is. If you are new to feminine energy or you're not familiar with feminine energy, there are a few different layers that are inside all of us, men and women. So your wounded feminine energy, think of it as the very bottom level of feminine energy. It's the part that is unhealed, it's maybe blocked by the limitations, limiting beliefs, old programming, trauma. It's the part that is causing you to show up as a dimmed down version of yourself. That's why I'm here, I'm going to help you heal that. Because at the very top level is your divine feminine energy. Divine feminine energy is so overused on the internet today. True divine feminine energy is a woman who is connected to her body who is connected to her intuition and who has done and is actively doing inner work to always grow and connect deeper to herself. So that is what divine, true divine feminine energy is. I know that there's a lot of misconceptions on the internet today. So where does this come from? Wounded feminine energy, it comes from trauma, wounds, and old programming. And I will get into exactly where you can see where this starts, where it might have come from for you. I also want to tell you, if you have wounded feminine energy, it is absolutely okay. I used to have wounded feminine energy. There's no shame in it. All that matters is that you are here, that you are healing and open to growing. So a few ways that you can tell if you have wounded feminine energy. Maybe you have an insecure attachment style. There are a few different attachment styles. There's the anxious, there is the avoidant, and then there is the anxious, avoidant, insecure, also called disorganized a lot of the time. Those three are the insecure attachment styles. Then we have the secure attachment style. If you have an insecure attachment style, it could represent that part of your feminine energy is wounded. You do not feel safe, you do not feel that you can trust people in relationships, and you do not feel confident opening yourself up to love, opening yourself up to the world. Feminine energy leads with openness, leads with trusting other people, being available for love. If you have an insecure attachment style, it's going to cause you to feel that you cannot be open to love. That is why we are here healing it together. Another, another way that you can tell if you have wounded feminine energy is it's hard for you to set boundaries. Maybe it's hard for you to say no. Maybe you have a hard time speaking your truth. Maybe you lie a lot, you try to make yourself appear as someone that you're not because it's hard for you to speak up. That is a sign of wounded feminine energy. A woman in her divine feminine energy knows who she is, she speaks her truth. She shows up authentically, without a mask. Another way that you can tell is <clears throat> that this woman has very toxic relationships. If you are in a toxic relationship, chances are part of you is toxic. We attract what we are. If you attract a toxic partner, there's part of you that's toxic. Because there's not a healthy relationship with someone else, you most likely do not have a healthy relationship with yourself, which shows that there's wounded feminine energy. You can also tell if you have a victim mindset. And if you have a victim mindset, on the other side of that, you're going to constantly be attracting negativity to your life, constantly attracting pain for your mind, for your body, if you find that you're always complaining, if, you, if there seems to be always something going wrong with your life, check and see, do I have a victim mindset? And can I get myself out of it? Wounded feminine energy versus divine feminine energy, to kind of put it into an example for you, you can think of divine feminine energy as a beautiful, secure vase full of water. She's very secure, she can hold that water, she's sturdy, she's grounded in herself and she is full of love, of confidence, of happiness. A wounded feminine energy vase would have holes on the sides where water is leaking out. 
there's no security to even hold abundance, to even hold love, to even be secure and hold in water. And if you notice, the water that is slipping out of the holes in that insecure wounded vase leaks out onto everything around it. Meaning the wounded feminine energy woman, her pain, her trauma leaks out into people, into their lives around her. This is why it's also so important to heal yourself, to shift into your divine feminine energy because you will hurt the people around you who are healthy. So moving into where it comes from. As I mentioned, trauma and wounds cause wounded feminine energy. Maybe you were abused when you were a kid. Maybe you were in a very toxic, unhealthy relationship. Maybe you had a parent who was emotionally unavailable or they didn't know how to give you the love that you needed. Maybe you grew up with a narcissistic parent and it caused you to have low self-esteem, low self-worth now. Low self-esteem and low self-worth, these are factors that contribute directly to wounded feminine energy. If you do not believe that you are worthy or enough as a woman, you will continue to create that reality for yourself. It is never your fault what happens to you, but it is your responsibility to heal. So do not blame other people for what happened. Take responsibility and do the work to heal. You do not deserve to have unforgiveness sitting inside of you. Let it go, move on, time to heal, and I am here with you. I can personally speak from this because the way that I grew up, it was a very abusive, toxic environment, and I did the work to heal. I'm actually so grateful that I grew up in that environment because I would never be here with you right now. I would never be speaking on camera about inner work and healing because I wouldn't have anything to heal from. I'm grateful for what I went through as a kid because it healed me to shift into my divine feminine energy. So be grateful for whatever you went through. It is making you the woman today. It is the reason why you're even here watching this video. Old programming. This is another way that we can shift into wounded feminine energy. If you think about it, we are all similar to computers. We all have this mindset and we have downloaded programming and software based on the way we were raised, based on society, based on school. And now we think a certain way because of everything we have downloaded into our minds. This programming can cause you to show up as a dimmed down version of yourself. In other words, wounded feminine energy. It's so important to recognize the way that you are programmed and you can tell based on the beliefs that you've had. Maybe you grew up in a household where your dad cheated on your mom. Now you do not trust men. Now you feel that it's unsafe for you to be provided for by a man because he will leave you or hurt you. Go back and look at your programming. Look at the way that your mind works. What are your beliefs? If your beliefs are causing you to be distrustful of the world, to always think negatively, to be on guard, you are going to be led by this old programming and it's going to keep you in the wounded spot. You can also look back and see, was I ever punished for speaking my mind? This is personally what happened for me growing up. And I realized there were consequences when I would speak up. So guess what happened? I became the nice girl. I had very, very hard time setting boundaries. I could not speak my mind until I started learning about feminine energy and doing my inner work years ago. And here's where I am today. A woman who knows how to set boundaries and speak her mind. It is possible for you. Do not say, I cannot change because of the old programming. You can. It starts with you deciding that it's available for you. So how do you heal? I have three steps on how to do this. And number one is one of my favorites. Number one, how to heal wounded feminine energy. You connect to your dark feminine energy. I've made a whole video just on dark feminine energy. I recommend you watch it after this. But here's why it's going to help you heal. Dark feminine energy is about connecting to the repressed, to the stuffed down shadow parts of yourself that may be hidden. Maybe because you are ashamed of them, maybe society has taught you they're shameful, maybe they hurt to bring up so you've stuffed them down. Going back to those parts helps you heal old trauma and old wounds, just as we've talked about. It also helps you go and connect to your body to learn how to speak your truth, to learn how to speak your mind. Excuse me. Dark feminine energy is all about being powerful, being connected to our body, connected to sensuality, connected to creativity, to desire. 
Dark feminine energy is beautiful. The only reason why it has the name dark is because it's looked down in by society. There was a question that I got from one of you and you asked, as a Muslim woman, can I have dark feminine energy? Absolutely. Dark feminine energy? Do not listen to what the internet tells you. Dark feminine energy is about knowing and loving who you are as a woman, showing up in your full power, showing up authentically as yourself, confidently, full of desire, burning with that feminine energy inside of you, connected to your passions, connected to your heart. That is what dark feminine energy is. It's not dangerous, it's not manipulative. It is knowing and loving who you are as a woman. You also learn to fully accept all sides of yourself when you connect to your dark feminine energy. When you know and love your flaws, you know your weaknesses, and you choose to embrace it, you are unstoppable. This is literally the key to confidence. You accept and know who you are fully as a woman, every single part. And doing that helps you show up in the world differently. Your energy is different. You love who you are. You can also learn what you've been hiding from yourself and stuffing down. Go back and heal through those emotions. Heal through any pain. You do not deserve to have emotions blocked inside of you. It's going to block your feminine energy, your creativity, your sensuality. These are gifts that you have with your feminine energy. You also love yourself enough to heal. Dark feminine energy loves who she is so much. She's almost obsessed with herself, obsessed in a good, healthy way, healing and growing and being her best. When you love yourself this much, naturally you will heal. So moving on to step number two, how to heal wounded feminine energy. You nourish your mind and your body. You guys probably knew I was going to say this. I swear I say this in every live stream. Nourish your mind, nourish your body with what you consume. And I'm talking about what you consume with your eyes, with your ears, and with your mouth. The way that you feed your mind directly relates to what your reality is. So are you listening to podcasts, books, YouTube videos that can uplift and heal you? Nourish your mind, learn about attachment styles, learn about how to build your self-esteem, build your self-worth. Learn how to go back and sit with emotions, learn what that takes, work with a therapist, with a coach. I have a course just on inner work and feminine energy on my website to help you have a guideline to heal. There's so many resources available. Fill your mind with things that nourish it. Eliminate toxic media, toxic music. I always talk about how the music today, it throws feminine and masculine energy off balance. Women are disrespected and degraded in music. I can't even talk about the lyrics. I'll probably get banned on YouTube if I say any of them. But what you are listening to, if it's hip hop and rap that talk so poorly about women, you are shifting into a state of wounded feminine energy. I love SZA, I love Summer Walker, but be careful of music like that. Being the victim, being the side chick, being cheated on. Do not fill your mind with that. Otherwise, you will create that to be your reality. Nourishing your body. Treat your body as a garden. Treat your body as a temple. You want to nourish your body and care for it as if it's this beautiful garden. What are you putting into your mouth? Are you eating mostly processed, toxic foods with no energy? You're treating your body like a dumpster, if you are. Love yourself enough to put food into your mouth that is going to electrify you, that is going to give you that beautiful, vibrant skin, increase your energy, lower your stress, make your body look and feel better. If you want more information here, check out my video, How to Get Your Dream Body, and I'll link it in the description. The reason why I say nourish your mind and your body, and I put this as step number two, when you do this, you're unconsciously training your mind and body to only accept things that nourish it. What I mean by this, when you are feeding your body healthy, you are only listening to positive, higher vibrational healing inspiration work, books and podcasts. Guess what? When toxic people, when toxic media try to enter into your field, it's not going to feel good. You are more connected to your feminine energy. Your intuition is going to tell you, this does not feel good for my body and you're going to reject it. Listen to that feeling because you just healed and grown. So unconsciously you reject what no longer nourishes you when you make the decision to nourish your soul, nourish your mind, nourish your body. 
you also have a higher vibration. The more that you nourish your body with these healthy, delicious foods, what I mean by this is mostly plant-based foods. If you're getting it from a box, if there's ingredients that you cannot pronounce, it's probably not nourishing you. I have another video called What I Eat in a Day, and you can go and see some of the meals that I cook to give you a better idea. The higher your vibration, the more electrifying you are. A woman in her divine feminine energy has a high vibration, so this is how you get there. Eat in a way that nourishes your soul. When you have a higher vibration, guess what happens too? You attract better people, better opportunities. It's so amazing the things that happen when you decide to love and care for your body. The more nourishment that you have, the more healing that you have. You're not only healing your mind, but you're healing any sicknesses, any diseases, anything that's keeping you stuck. When you feel better, when you feel lighter and more energetic, you feel happier. You feel more like moving your body. You feel more excited to be in relationships. And all of this contributes to your divine feminine energy. No more wounded feminine energy. This is the second step for you to take. The third and final step, and then I'll take some questions. Envision yourself as that healed version and begin showing up as her. This is something that I recommend to all of my clients who coach with me. And what I tell them to do, start small. Start with small habits where, let me think of an example. Yes, let's say that you are going into the pantry and you're really hungry. What would the highest and most healed version of yourself choose to cook for a meal and then make that your decision? So you start with something small and then when it comes to setting boundaries with the boss, you are able to speak from that divine feminine energy within you because you've been already implementing the habits in other areas that are from that highest healed version of yourself. Make choices that show up as that woman. We are all actors in a movie. I say this all the time. We are living in a movie. You are the director, you're the producer, you are the actor. You create the movie. Other people are not sitting and creating it for you. There is this quote that I love. It is probably my favorite quote of all time. If you do not like where you are, move. You are not a tree. Do not blame your circumstances. Do not blame other people. You are responsible for where you are in life. Pick yourself up and move by starting to make habits that align with the most healed, highest version of yourself. When you feel triggered, when you feel like you are really getting upset in, search, in certain situations, ask yourself, what would the healed version of myself do? How would she react? And then show up, remember you are an actor, show up as that woman and start embodying what, what her characteristics are. Change is supposed to be uncomfortable. If you are not uncomfortable, you're probably not changing. And if you're not changing, you are not growing. Embrace change. Embrace the 10 seconds of being uncomfortable. It is going to be worth the lifetime of happiness that you get. The last point here, before taking some of your guys' questions, what I notice in wounded feminine energy, if you are in your wounded feminine energy as a woman, you will often shift into masculine energy. It is because you do not feel safe in your body. It is because you might be hyper independent. You might be overly sexual. If you feel you are in your wounded feminine energy, be so careful because you usually shift into your masculine energy. Most women that I meet, whether I'm coaching with them or just observing them in life, if they're in their masculine energy, I know that there's a feminine energy wound within. The interesting part is I've also noticed it's the same thing with men. Men that are in their feminine energies, it's not that they're showing up with feminine energy, it's that they're operating in a place of wounded masculine energy. They are not safe, they are not confident, they are not secure in their own masculine energy. It's wounded and that is why they've become feminine. There's a lot of wounded masculine energy today. And that is why we see less men pursuing women, uh, less men providing and protecting and showing up in their divine masculine energy because the energies are so out of balance. But I really feel God has put me here to help bring the energies back in balance. I know how amazing it feels to be in my feminine energy. It's been a journey of, I don't know, maybe six or seven years since I've started studying it. And I'm here to help you get there too. I recommend going to my website, thefeminineglow.com. I'm so excited. A lot of you have already signed up already for my very first course. It's called Master Your Feminine Energy. All 
everything that I've learned about feminine energy my whole life, I've put in this course. I give you the guideline on how to heal, how to do the inner work and grow to truly be in your divine feminine energy. It's releasing officially on Valentine's Day, but you can pre-order it right now. It's about 25% off. So go and check that out. Now I'm going to take some of your guys' questions. Happy Friday, everyone. Mm. Princess says, I feel like I am obsessed with male validation. How do I stop this? Ooh, Princess, great question. And I was listening to, you guys know my favorite YouTuber is Mina. She's the universe guru. She says, in the Eastern culture, validation is not even a word. She's so confused why the Western culture loves validation so much because it does not exist in the Eastern culture. What I recommend for you, Princess, remove the word validation from your vocabulary. And re that will remove it as a goal for you. You, your focus should be on connecting to your body, connecting to what makes you feel good. When you do this, when you do the steps that I've just outlined for you, your focus is peeled off other people and it's instead shifted back on yourself. The better that you feel, the more internal validation you're still getting, the more fulfilled you feel in your life. And you are going to naturally attract people that align with that fulfilled version of you. They're just going to continue to confirm that you get to be someone who feels good, who is fulfilled, who is loved and cherished. You are always attracting exactly what you're an energetic match for. So become that woman that really loves and is fulfilled by herself, and then a partner will show up to give that for you. But remove the word validation from your vocabulary. It will help you to stop putting that as your goal. I love your guys' questions. Thank you guys so much for the likes, for the compliments. I have the best girls in the world. I'm so happy for all of you that are here. Let's see. How do I check if I have a victim mindset? Oh, I love all these self-aware questions. So the way that you check if you have a victim mindset, pay attention to the words that come out of your mouth. When someone asks, how are you doing? What is your response? If your response is talking anything negative, complaining or talking about a bad situation, your mind immediately goes to something to look for sympathy and pity. That is how you know if you have a victim mindset. You can also look at where your focus is on most of the day. Those gray areas where you're not really intentionally thinking, what is floating around in your mind? Are you focusing on problems? Are you focusing on the past? Are you focusing on, excuse me, things that people have done that have hurt you? That is how you tell if you have a victim mindset. I really love that question. How does feminine and masculine energy interact with queerness and gay couples? So, um, comrade, I'm not 100% sure what you mean by this question. Do you mean how do they interact with each other in a relationship? Feminine and masculine energy is not gender specific. So the way that you interact if you're in a same-sex relationship is you show up balanced in your feminine and masculine energies. And what you are very, very strong in, let's say you're very, very strong in feminine energy, then you attract a masculine energy partner. It doesn't matter if they're a man or a woman. I love how you smile with your eyes. Thank you. Your guys' comments light me up. Thank you. A book recommendations. So in my course, I am giving you my full list of every single book that I've read and the books that I still plan on reading. So if you want my full book list, it's going to be inside my Master Your Feminine Energy program. Also, I am creating a private Facebook group. If you do one-on-one -on -one coaching with me, I'm sorry, I don't have any more spots for coaching right now. I'm completely full. That's why I have this course as an option too. If you do coaching or if you have signed up for the course from my website, thefeminineglow.com, you get to be a part of this private Facebook group. It's a group of us divine feminine energy women where we can post for inspiration, ask questions. I wanted to create a community where we could talk and interact more personally. And I'll be in there talking with you guys too. So that's another spot that you can join if you're interested. Food is either a drug or nutrients. Yes, that is so true. Oh, you guys ask the best questions. 
Ooh, what if you were trying to heal your feminine energy but your household is toxic? Eurelis? Yeah, girl, I've definitely been through this. So I, I really felt like I was trying to carry the household for so long. Then I realized that actually wasn't in my feminine energy. I was trying to heal the people around me. The focus should be you doing your inner work and healing and then releasing control of other people. If you're trying to control them, if you're focused on they're not changing, they're keeping me stuck, your focus is actually outside of you. You want to connect back to your body and understand the more you level up and heal, people will either level up with you or they will naturally fall off. So stay true to who you are. I always say put up that mental energetic bubble around you. If you have toxic family members, stay true to yourself. The more that you set boundaries, this happens with all of my clients, even the ones who think my parents will never respect me or my sister, she will always treat me this way. When they start doing inner work, they, the words that they say, the energy that they carry is different. Because of this, the people in their household show up differently. So focus on continuing to do your inner work and then release control of how your toxic household is. Oh, you guys have so many great questions coming in. Congratulations on the course. Thank you. Um, how to pop back at a man who's trying to make you jealous. Oh my gosh, I love your questions. If a man is trying to make you jealous, do not give any energy to reward poor behavior. If you do not want your boyfriend to make you jealous, do not give attention, energy, time, when this happens. You instead peel that off of him, put it back on yourself, and you focus on feeling good. Take that energy off of him. I always say, and you'll see this in the course too, of just how to start getting outcomes that you want. It's by removing the focus off other people. Do not reward poor behavior. Literally act that it does not exist. That was a great question. Yes, this is why I love you girls. You ask the best questions. Ooh, so Aaliyah says, I'm trying to be in my feminine energy, but my boyfriend is in his feminine. I want him to be in his masculine. Yes, so if you are in your full divine feminine energy and your man is still in the feminine energy, ask yourself, is this a dynamic that I can stay in? Because a truly masculine energy man, when you shift into your feminine energy, he will want to shift into the masculine energy. You might be with a man who enjoys being in his feminine energy. Is that going to work for you? That's what I would ask yourself. I would also appreciate the masculine energy things that he does. So when he is doing things that um, really help you, that make you feel good, that are more masculine energy, award that behavior. Give him so much appreciation and love. Let him know how good it feels for you when he's in his masculine energy. Okay guys, I'm going to take one more question then I'm going to have to run. You should try doing a live while I'm under your desk. <laughs> I'm going to have to pass on that. How to set a boundary with a man of what you need in a relationship without being controlling. So the way that you do this is you remove the expectation. You leave it open for whether or not that man is going to meet your standard or going to respect your boundary. So let him know what would feel good for your body. Let him know what your boundary is. As I said, the dark feminine energy loves and knows who she is. She communicates her truth with power. Don't be scared to say what you need. Say it with love and then release. Release, connect back to your body, give him room to come to you to show that he wants to be in his masculine energy and meet that standard. And then leave room to see what he's going to do. If he does not, then you accept. You say, thank you for showing me this is not going to work out and you move on. Because what someone else won't do, another person will. Also, when you leave room, he will want to meet that boundary. He will want to respect your standard if he is in his divine masculine energy. Men love to be the one to come up with the solutions. They love to know that what they do is their ideas. So put it out there, what would make you feel good, communicate your standard, and then lean back, leave room for him to show you. Thank you guys so much. Thank you for all of your tips. Yes, thank you guys so much for showing up today, all of your amazing questions. I hope that you have a great rest of your day and I will see you soon. Bye.